I already made a video on how to run macOS on Linux a while back, thanks to a snap package, but it hasn't been updated in four years, and it's a very old version of macOS now, so I thought I would revisit the topic. And if you are wondering why anyone would ever want to run macOS when they already have access to Linux, well, there are plenty of use cases to test cross-platform apps, to test websites, or just to have a macOS system without having to spend the cash to buy a Mac. So let's look at how you can do all of this, and let's look at our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, and you probably have heard about them by now, but if you haven't, just know that they're your all-in-one solution to build your own website, however complex or simple you want it to be. You can completely customize the website to look and feel and have the features that you want. You have a big selection of templates and then you can rearrange them by just dragging and dropping blocks into place. You can change the general colors, you can add new pages and you have a big library of modules like a complete online shop with online payment or a members only area, a video gallery. You can even pick your own domain name and book it from Squarespace and they even have a module to design your own logo. So if you need a website, but you don't really know how to get started or you don't have the time or the technical skills, just head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment or click the link in the description below and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. And as you probably guessed, we're going to run macOS in a virtual machine here because apart from attempting a Hackintosh install, which is not the easiest of things, especially on laptops, well, there's no other solution really. So I first try accomplishing this with VirtualBox, but oh boy, did that not work well. All I could get was kernel panic after kernel panic. I managed to get to the installer, I formatted the disk and started the install process, but I never got a functional macOS session. The system just crashed again and again. So after consulting with my good friends from Patreon, they recommended QuickMU, which was the right call. This thing is a very simple program that uses QMU to automatically create VMs for a bunch of operating systems, whether that's macOS, Linux, or Windows. And it will download all you need and configure the VM for you so you don't have to run through a bunch of hoops. And we can also install a graphical app to handle all of this, although that is totally optional, and it's called Quick GUI. So I left links on how to install QuickMU and Quick GUI in the description. Basically, if you use an Arch-based distro or an Ubuntu-based distro, you can either get them from the AUR or from a PPA. If you use something else, they are instructions down in the description. And don't worry, if you don't want to use the GUI, I will also give you instructions using the command line to install the VM and to run it. So if you went for the GUI, it is all extremely simple. You install the Quick GUI app and you launch it. The app might take a while to display anything inside the window, but once it does, you can click on Create New Machine. Now on my end, Quick GUI had a window that was too small. It cut off the buttons. I couldn't scroll, I couldn't resize it, but if that happens to you as well, you can still click on the buttons. You will see them sticking out a little bit. Now you then get to pick the directory where you want to set things up and the operating system you want to install. So go ahead and either find a macOS in the list or type Mac and click on that. In the version button, you can pick which version you want. I went with Monterey, that's the latest macOS version Quick MU supports. Trying to update that to Sonoma resulted in a broken VM for me. And finally, click the download button to grab all you need to get started. Now, technically going further than that is against Apple's end user license agreement. You are not allowed to run macOS on non-Apple hardware. Depending on where you live, this license agreement might be enforceable or not, but do note that by just accepting to install macOS after that, you're basically breaking the install term. So Apple might do as they please. They might sue you if they really want to do that. They might remove your iCloud account if they detect you used it on something that is not allowed. There are no documented cases of this, but be warned. Now, once the download is done, click dismiss and then click the little X in the top left to close the downloader part of the app. You can then click manage existing machines and click the little play button next to your macOS VM and you're good to go. You should land in the setup for macOS. Now, if you don't want to use a GUI, you can run QuickMU using the command line. 
To do so, you can open your terminal app of choice on Linux and run quick get macOS Monterey. Let the program do its thing, and once it's done, you can run quickmu-vm macOS-monterey.conf to run the VM. This will run the VM and land in the macOS setup utility. Now, whatever method you picked, you should now have an open window with your macOS virtual machine running. It's using Spicy, it's a GTK-based GUI to run virtual machines using the Spice remote desktop protocol. It's a very simple GUI with options to resize the window, to share the clipboard between your system and the VM, and to pass through USB devices. Note that if you run your VM from the command line, you will not get the spicy client, you will just get a window without any buttons or toolbars. I don't know why, but it's not the same experience. Now you can resize the window to suit your needs, the VM will also scale to fit, and then we can proceed to install macOS. Click inside the VM window so it can grab your inputs and then select the macOS base system entry with the arrow keys, then press enter. If you need to regain control of your mouse and keyboard, you can press shift and F12 so the VM doesn't keep control of it. Then once you're inside the macOS install interface, you can open the disk utility and you need to select the hard drive that was created for you. Click the erase button in the top right corner and rename that disk. I called it macOS. Do note that the keyboard will be using a QWERTY layout by default. Confirm and then close the disk utility window by clicking on the little red button up top. Click reinstall macOS Monterey and then proceed to select your recently erased hard drive and proceed to accepting the licensing terms. Again, be wary of that, blah blah, it's illegal to do that if your country recognizes that user license agreement as valid, which some countries might, some countries might not. The install will then run. It takes a long while. On my own computer, it took about one hour to complete, so be patient. Once the install is done, you should be able to reboot into a macOS session and create your user and skip all the BS steps that Apple puts in that step of the install. Now you might have to restart manually to complete the install uh, if after running the installer the bar goes to the end and drops you back into the reinstall macOS Monterey window. You can just click the little Apple menu uh, on the top left, select restart and then on reboot you can select the macOS disk that you just created and the install will continue and finish this way. It might do it automatically, it didn't for me. Now, all of this runs in a QMU VM, so you can obviously configure it to better use your PC's hardware, to use more CPU cores, use more RAM, stuff like that. Because by default, macOS runs like crap on this VM. Now, to change the configuration of the VM, you use a text file that is stored in the directory you picked at install. In my case, it's in my home folder. It should be called macOS-monterey.conf. You can open it with your text editor of choice and tweak things in there. By default, you will only use two CPU cores. I changed that to four as my system can handle that without any problem. Just change the number after the CPU underscore cores parameter. If you want to give the VM more RAM, you can add the following line at the end of the file. RAM equals 16 G. I gave 16 gigs because my laptop has 32, but you can give it just eight gigs. It should theoretically run with four, but it might not perform too well. You will also want to enable trim. It will let the VM be compacted when you delete files, so it doesn't end up using too much hard drive space after a while. If you don't do it, the VM image will grow and grow and will never scale back, even when you remove things inside of your macOS VM. To enable trim, open the terminal app from macOS. It's in the utilities subdirectory of the applications folder. Type sudo trimforce enable and then type your macOS account's password that you set up when booting macOS. Answer with the letter Y to confirm you want to proceed, then type enter and do so a second time to reboot the VM. And after that you will have trim enabled and your VM will not balloon up to swallow your entire hard drive. Now if you want to pass a CD-ROM as an ISO to the VM, to maybe install something. You can also do that. Just add the following line to the VM's config file we use to change the RAM and the CPU cores. You can add fixed underscore ISO equals the path to your ISO file. Now this should result in a usable system. This is QMU, so you can change 
a lot more things in there but this is kind of out of scope for this video if you want to learn more about qmu there are plenty of resources online to do so now of course it is a vm so there are limitations first 3d acceleration will not be good here as in it doesn't even exist mac os doesn't support it so your system will feel a bit slow and you will not get smooth animations video playback might also be a bit stuttery and you will not be able to play any games although if you're running linux as the host system chances are you already have a much more capable gaming system than any mac will probably ever be you could theoretically buy a GPU that is officially supported by Apple, for example, an AMD RX 580 or something, and try to do dual GPU with one GPU for your Linux system and one that you pass through to the VM. But that's a long shot, and honestly, it's also out of scope for this video. Now, another limitation is that you do have to accept Apple's license agreement when installing the system. And in theory, this does not allow you to run macOS on non-Mac hardware. So just know that it is not a supported or authorized use case. It doesn't prevent you from using your iCloud account in the macOS VM. I do it. I did it a while back on a bunch of VMs and I never got a problem. But if Apple changes policies and manages to detect that you're using iCloud on a non-authorized install of macOS, they might outright ban your account. We don't know. There are no reports of this, but it could happen. So just be wary of this. Now, if you can't log in to any iCloud services or the Mac App Store, you will have to run a little command. The error comes from your device not being verified by Apple because your wired Ethernet device doesn't match what macOS expects. To solve that, you can open the macOS system preferences, then go to network and delete all the network devices. Then you will need to open the macOS terminal app and type the following command line, sudo rm slash library slash preferences slash system configuration slash network interfaces dot plist after a reboot the issue should be fixed and you should be able to log in through any iCloud service and using the mac app store now some features of mac os will probably not work either like continuity or imessage because everything is in a vm and it might not have access to the required hardware or network features if you need to change the resolution of the VM, you will need to use macOS's display preferences. Changing it using the VM's GUI doesn't work, and you will not be able to share the clipboard using the VM's GUI either. macOS does not support that. Now, you should get USB pass-through for all devices, although if you install Catalina or an older version, you will only get USB 2. More recent versions will give you USB 3. And also note that just closing the window in which the VM is running does not stop the VM. You will either need to completely close the terminal window where you launch the command line to run the VM, or you will need to stop the VM from the quick GUI interface. If you don't, the VM keeps running in the background and uses up resources. Now, what you can do in that VM, though, is run Xcode to develop iOS apps, for example. You can run Apple-only applications like Numbers, Pages, or Keynote to open, edit, and create these file formats. You have access to most apps from the Mac App Store as well, at least those that don't need graphical acceleration. You can test your websites or web apps using Safari, or you can run your cross-platform apps in there to test them on macOS. You can also share files from your Linux system to the macOS VM. If you already have Samba installed on your Linux system, the macOS VM will detect it and enable it, so your shares will be accessible from the macOS Finder. You can also access the VM using the SPICE protocol as a remote desktop, so you could run that VM without a graphical user interface on any server or computer and access it when you need it from another device. You can just run the VM using the command line quickmu-vm macos-monterey.conf display none. This will start the VM on your system without a graphical interface, and you can then access it using a remote desktop app that supports the SPICE protocol on any other computer. Now, in theory, you can also do system updates from the VM, but updates might break things depending on what Apple changes in there. I did perform the update to macOS Sonoma from the VM, and it broke it, so you probably should not do that. Just wait for the project to support Sonoma. 
And there you go. Now you can use macOS for your personal needs, professional needs, to just learn about it for your career, to just test things out, or to just realize how limiting and pretty bad of an operating system it is. And yeah, I do not like macOS. I have videos about that uh, somewhere on my channel that explain why it kind of sucks. And of course, Quick MU is not limited to macOS. You can also use it to quickly spin a VM of Windows 10 or Windows 11 without having to mess with regedit or the registry, which you kind of have to do to install Windows 11 in a VM. It's a great little project. You can also install any Linux distro you might want to run in a VM. So you can keep that installed even if you don't use macOS afterwards because you realized it really sucked. So thanks for all my Patreon supporters who suggested it because you first saved that video and second made me discover a really, really cool tool. And in return, I'll make you discover our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. If you are a Linux user, you know how painful it can be to buy a brand new computer to run Linux on and end up having to solve a bunch of issues using the command line because the hardware isn't really perfectly tailored to support Linux. Well, with Tuxedo Computers, you don't really have to bother with that because what they do is sell laptops, desktops, and nugs that ship with Linux out of the box. You know that all the hardware runs perfectly with Linux because it's been picked because it supports Linux really well. You have plenty of options and choices for every price point, every need. You can customize all the devices heavily, whether it's the components, your own logo on your laptop, your own keyboard layout. You can open the laptops, repair them, upgrade them. And yeah, Tuxedo Computers is basically all I use these days. I run the channel on an Infinity Book Pro 16 and I do all my gaming on a Tuxedo Cube that I turned into a SteamOS console. So if you need a new computer and you want to make sure it runs Linux, click the link in the description below and buy something from Tuxedo Computers instead of supporting a Windows-only manufacturer. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and it was helpful. If it was, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you really enjoyed the channel and you want to help support, there are plenty of links in the description of the video to do just that. And if you become a Patreon supporter or YouTube member, you'll also get access to a daily Linux and open source news show. So click those links just for that. And thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.